Hello, and welcome to the world of RuneScape, a series where I discuss the strengths of RuneScape 2 and compare it to its successors. Last time was an introduction to the Grand Exchange. This time, we'll be talking about how the game managed its massive player base. This is Varrock, one of RuneScape's largest cities in 2005. Depending on when you started playing, you might not recall the town square ever being this lively. Back in the mid-2000s, RuneScape was very good at controlling population density, making sure that towns and cities that were designed to be filled by players were actually filled by players, as well as making sure there was a healthy spread across the map. I see a lot of veteran players reminiscing about this period of time like, hey remember when people just chilled anywhere and Varrock Fountain was a super popular hangout spot? Yeah, too bad we're not kids anymore because that's the only reason we did any of that stuff or something. I find when it comes to games that are very open-ended and provide a lot of choice, people really underestimate game design. Just because a game makes you feel like you can go anywhere and do anything, doesn't mean you aren't being guided through an experience by the developers. 95% of the things you do have been thought about and designed around accordingly. RuneScape is no exception. Yes, a younger and less experienced player base is going to approach a game differently, but player behavior as a whole doesn't change this drastically with a intervention by the developers. So what happened? Well, a couple things. The first has to do with server size and an ever-expanding world, but that's not something we really need to get into today considering we're mainly going to be focusing on the free-to-play area, which hasn't changed much at all. So that brings us to the second issue, and to understand this one, we're going to have to understand how resources affected the community. So, like we mentioned before, teleports influenced where players went, but they didn't necessarily influence where they stayed. That came down to player resources, things that players use to get items, train their skills, make progress, whatever. Typically, the more resources were in an area, the more people would accumulate there naturally. It's not like you'd find a bunch of people in the middle of the Karamja jungle, no, they all gravitated towards places of value. Now, some of these resources were more influential than others, so I made a little tier list to rank their importance. All the way at the bottom, you have your NPCs. Stuff like shops, quest starts, whatever. By themselves, they weren't especially good at drawing crowds, considering they're just one-off things a player might use only a few times, but typically you'd find a ton of these in the more populated areas. Next up, you got your natural resources. Stuff like valuable trees, mining spots, and fishing holes. Then you have your tools and appliances, ovens, furnaces, anvils, that kind of stuff. Then, way up in its own category, far above everything else, you have the most valuable resource in the game, banks. As I'm sure you already know, they allowed players to store all of their extra items and gold and access them at any branch across the world. Banks were the biggest influence when it came to where players congregated, and it's not hard to see why. Think about it. Anytime you wanted to do anything, skilling, a quest, trade with other players, you needed your items, so you needed a bank. You felt naked not being around one, so it was always in your best interest to not be too far from one at any given time. Keeping this in mind, we can see how it shaped RuneScape's populace in the mid-2000s. Let's just take a look at the free-to-play area, starting with Remington. There's a few resources here and there, but nothing major. Most importantly, no bank. This place was usually a ghost town, and it was designed to be. It was just a spooky little rat-infested square. Then you have Draenor Village. Not a lot going on, but it did have a bank next to a few skilling spots. There was never a ton of people here, but there was just enough to make it feel lively. Then you have one of RuneScape's big cities, Falador. As you can see, there was a decent amount of shops and other resources to take advantage of. It was here where the infamous trade gardens were born, an area formed organically by the community where players would congregate to trade items amongst themselves. And this area just happened to form right in between two banks. Not a coincidence. Then you have Varrock, arguably RuneScape's biggest and busiest city. Tons of shops and tons of skilling areas. And hey, it's Varrock Fountain, the town square we were talking about earlier, nestled right between two banks. These were the systems that governed the masses and helped make the world feel lively. Up until... Hey, hey what, what's that sound? I'll take not getting it for 800 
In November of 2007, ignoring every design principle the game had ever employed up until that point, the new leadership at Jagex decided to do this. Uh, what is put the most valuable resource the game has ever seen by far in one spot, effectively ghost towning the entire game. You see, the Grand Exchange became the new thing that made you feel naked when you weren't around it, the thing you'd always want within arm's reach. But because it was in one location, and one location only, it became a vacuum, extracting players from all the towns and cities and relocating them to one big circle. And just in case you think this is me spouting nonsense by myself, just keep in mind, this is not just my opinion. This was a major concern within the development team prior to the update's launch in 2007, yet Jagex went ahead and pushed it out anyway. Now, this is the point of the video where some of you might go, okay, sure, maybe some places are less populated now, but why does that really matter? What's the big deal about a bunch of people being in one spot as opposed to a bunch of other spots? Well, I will tell you what the big deal is. RuneScape is a game of idleness. And by that, I mean there is a lot of downtime. Even in this age of efficiency scape, or whatever you want to call it, you'll still find tons and tons of people just standing at the Grand Exchange. In these long MMO style games, you're not always working towards a goal or grinding out a skill. Sometimes you just want to chill. Designers are aware of this, and so they create low-key activities designed to just be fun. They don't even need to have great rewards. In RuneScape's case, that's stuff like mini games, the party room, and special events to some extent. Now, it is incredibly important for developers to design around the fact that at some point, a player is going to want to stop chilling and get back to training their skills and making money. That means the player is going to want to be in an area that allows them to do so in the most efficient way. Back in the mid 2000s, that meant being near a bank. So if you wanted a lot of players to hang out and relax with a fun side activity as a sort of break from their regular routine, all you really had to make sure of was A, it was easy to access, and B, it had a bank nearby. This slowly changed after the Grand Exchange was introduced, because all of a sudden, the GE was a new thing you needed to be around in order to do anything efficiently. It was basically a super bank. You had access to every item instantly as long as you had the money for it. So anytime you wanted to shift gears and maybe do another quest, train another skill, whatever, you had to be there. This was, and continues to be, terrible for the game, because no one will enter that state of idleness anywhere besides the Grand Exchange. The biggest reason why practically no one plays stuff like Castle Wars anymore isn't because it's not fun, or because the rewards aren't good enough, it's because no one will leave this zone to chill. No one will leave without a goal already in mind. There's a bit of a meme that's gone around the old school RuneScape subreddit for a while now about moving dead content to the GE or moving the GE itself in order to revive some stuff. The funny thing about this is that it would actually work. If you moved Castle Wars to the Grand Exchange, people would actually play Castle Wars because you'd catch significantly more people in that state of idleness of the problems I have with the Grand Exchange, and there are many, this is a pretty big one, and I don't understand how people still defend it. Usually I see people throwing around pictures of the Varrock trade market from the mid 2000s like, look it's the same thing, but it's not. Only one or two worlds dedicated to trade look like that. The rest were populated the way they were designed to be. With the Grand Exchange, it's every single world, and it's incredibly unhealthy for a game like RuneScape to have a super hub like this. The solution to this seems kinda obvious, right? Make the Grand Exchange accessible in multiple areas. You could even just attach them to all the banks. Honestly, I cannot find a major problem with doing this, and I can't fathom why they didn't just take this approach when they were planning out the update at the time. The only problem I can think of is that they'd have to redesign quite a few banks in order to accommodate the increase in player usage. Just off the top of my head, I already know they'd have to redesign Varrock East Bank, as it was already too small in my opinion. Maybe redesigning one massive area was much easier than redesigning several others. I don't know. All I know is that what they went with did not work. 
2007 marked the swift death of a lot of things, like the wilderness and free trade. But one death came over a longer period of time. That was the slow death of the hangout spot. It may not seem like much, but it was RuneScape's ability to have crowds spread out across the entire map that made the world feel as alive and vibrant as it did. And the current versions of the game haven't been able to capture that magic. So today, we talked about population density, downtime, and the role the Grand Exchange had in all that. Next time, we're going to talk about something we already kind of brushed on today, and that's travel, and how the game incentivized players to explore. So I guess just wait for, I, I hope I'll see you on, on the next one there. Oh, that's not a good noise. I don't know why I did that.